Hey guys, I can't believe it. There's another message about the transitioning from the ssa.gov username, access to your social security online account, whatever information we can all find about ourselves with regard to SSA um, and the, the transition over to the two other formats because they're getting rid of that one we've been doing for a very long time. So I'm just gonna go through this. They actually provide a video step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to make the transition. So I'm gonna link that. I will also just link this page and let's just go through it. Um, they, know, they know that if you created a social security username more than three years ago, which I know I did, um, people like me are gonna need to transition to a new or existing login.gov account or use an id.me account to have continuous access to our online services, meaning the SSA's online services. They go on to say that they had recently announced this news in a blog post and a press release, which I had shared to you guys um, in the last few weeks. Okay, so they note that starting last month, well, June, June 1st of 2024, we're almost into August now, um, they note that people who sign into their personal My Social Security account with their username are given the option to transition to login.gov right from there. Um, so let's see what they say. Who does this affect? If you created your free and secure My Security account on or after September 18th, 2021, so the people that only just started to access their account in the last three years, they don't have to do anything because it was already apparently uh, meshed in with this whole new thing that was going to be coming out. Of course, if you are among the 46 million people like myself who created an account before September 2021 and use your username and password to access Social Security online services today, you will need to create or use an existing account with one of our two credential service providers, CSP, and those two credential service providers, as they call them, apparently, is login.gov or id.me. They go on to say, with regard to a deadline, while you can still use a username and password to sign into your personal My Social Security account right now, this option is going away later this year. At that time, you will be required to have a login.gov or id.me account if you want to continue to access your personal My Social Security and many other convenient online services. Da -da -da. A personal My Social Security account provides tools for everyone, whether you receive benefits or not. I will attest to that. I do not receive benefits and I never have, but I like to see my earning statement to make sure that they nothing went glitchy in the transferring of information about me filing my taxes and that information getting into my social security account because that's what that's what's going to figure out if I have credits to be insured, be it for disability or retirement. And they're both, you know, calculated a little differently. Um, and the amounts, um, that, you know, those earnings are going to affect and create whatever the calculation is for my retirement benefit amount or same amount would be if I became disabled. So looking at those earnings, reported earnings is important in case something is missing. What if you filed a tax return and you were self-employed and that's not showing up and you know you paid those taxes? somehow it didn't get from point A to point B, you can go back and get that corrected. And now you get credit for that time period. Okay, you paid for it, right? Um, but, uh, you can also use your account to request a replacement social security card, check the status of an application, estimate future benefits and manage the benefits you already receive. They are telling us this. Um, and all that's true. Uh, then they answer the question as to why the SSA is making that change this login change. They said this change will simplify our sign-in experience and better align with federal authentication standards while providing safe and secure access to our online services. I believe it. And so what do we need to do? To avoid any disruptions in accessing our online services, we encourage you to transition your account now by signing into your account with your username and password. Their online instructions will guide you through the process of creating or signing in to an existing login.com account. Sound good? They go on to give you a little information about login 
login.gov and id.me. They said that login.gov is your one government account for simple, secure, and private access to participating government agencies. Okay. You can use your login.gov account to access your social security benefit information, services, and other information. And you can use the same login.gov account to manage other government benefits and services. And they give you a link for support. ID.me, the other CSP, is a single sign-on provider that also meets the US government's online identity proofing and authentication requirements. You can use one ID.me account to access government and private services. Um, I believe that might be the commercial company that they've retained instead of, you know, apparently you have your pick. So I don't know, you know, I had one viewer who was very skeptical, skeptical, I could talk about the ID.me, um, thought it was very invasive. I have not been to other uh, either one um, as far as I know. <laughs> And so I can't really comment on that, but anyway, it's something that, you know, if we want access electronically, we're gonna have to do this. There is no reason to believe you are forced to do this at all. I mean, people still go, they call, they, you know, appear at their local office if they need something. So this isn't, and I, I can't imagine it ever would be mandatory because there are too many people that just can't, can't manage this you know they either don't have a computer or um and i know they probably say you can get it through your phone but can anybody see that little stuff on a phone i don't know i always say go to the library it's free use one of their computers uh, a lot of people i know do that if they don't want to get their own computer which is understandable because it can be expensive all right guys um i'm going to link the video with these step-by-step -step instructions so i don't recreate that wheel i will talk to you later bye Hey, so if the subject matter of the video you just listened to is of interest and you want more on it, stay tuned. Here's another one about the same topic, but a little bit different by now. Let's talk a little bit more about the changes coming to how we're going to be able to get into our social security accounts ourselves to see what little bit the SSA shares with us. Okay, so as you know, historically, it's been ssa.gov forward slash my account or some other navigation once you're at the ssa.gov site, because I think there's more than one way to get to that link. Okay, and the reason why I want to go into this again is because there's been a lot of blowback. Um, we had just gotten word about the two new avenues being login.gov and id.gov me, I believe. Uh, and people aren't that thrilled, at least not the ones that are more concerned about having to give up so much information to get your own stuff. Now, I will say on the defensive side um, of at least potentially one of those avenues, they want it to be secure to know it's you so that they don't give your account access to somebody else who's uh, identity theft to do. Okay. I get all that. I too feel very uncomfortable. I haven't done it yet. Um, I once in a blue moon get into ssa.gov, the old, the old way of doing it that is still applicable. But anyway, had a, a thoughtful and scared um, and probably not seeing the realities person um, express some real, um, it, it seemed like very upset, like this isn't true. And, and, um, uh, I spoke to an SSA person, please, um, who said it's, you know, it's not true. We'd send you a letter if we need anything more. All right, let, let's get to the bottom line of it. A lot of the, the clerks at the SSA field offices or the 1-800 number do not know everything about their own agency. Guys, a lot of them are new, newer. And in any event, they know what they know. They don't know everything. And I think it is a shame because this is a really important thing that I think they should have probably, the second they're going to announce something, they need to let to the public of this magnitude, they need to let the staffers who might be picking up the phone for a lay person like one of us or an attorney like me um, know the answer, even if it's a candy answer. So anyway, for that lovely viewer who, you know, just to, maybe help her 
understand that no matter what she thinks or wants to believe, that doesn't make it reality. So here we go. I'm going to link the page I get this from. And I think I'm also going to, if I can, cut and paste this language from it. Uh, and I'll put it in the comments below. So this is on the page where they talk to you about, you can sign in with login.gov, id.me, or sign in with the social security option that they had before. And I'm trying to see if they actually, I keep, it's sitting behind my page, but you'll see it when you get to it. All right. So on this little link here, it says, don't know which op option to sign in with. You have the option to sign in using login.gov, id.me, or social security username account. That must be the old method that we're all used to, to access social security's online service. If you don't have an account, you can create one with login.gov or id.me. Notice that they don't add social security username method to that. They just give you those two. And I'm wondering if that means at this point, you can't create an account now with social security username method, only with the login.gov or the id.me. Okay. Um, they go on to say that login.gov is a U.S. government sign-in service that provides a simple, secure, and private way for the public to access government websites. You can use your login.gov account to access your Social Security benefits, services, and information in a single secure account. You can also use your login.gov account to manage other government benefits and services. Okay, that's dandy in theory, right? Okay, then they tell you about ID.me. ID.me is a single sign-in provider. Guys, I think this means it's a commercial provider of sorts. Um, not the government, but they're using them. That meets the U.S. government's online identity proof and authentication requirements. Please consider using ID.me if you live outside the United States. So that suggests to me that maybe don't use the ID.me if you live in the United States and don't have to, uh, if you have other options. It says, please note that you do not need to create a new ID.me credential specifically for social security purposes. You can use one ID.me account to access both government and business services. Now here's the, here's the kicker, okay? So here's for the viewer. Um, they go on to the third way, right? This is the original old way of doing things that we've had for quite a few years now. It wasn't perfect, but it certainly helped people get certain documents. You, social security username. This applies if you created an account with Social Security prior to September 18th, 2021 and sign in with a username versus your email address. Starting September, 2024, so for the viewer out there that's confused on this, here's your proof. Please do not take hearsay verbiage from untrained people at the field offices or the 800 number. You have to follow up everything you learn always and find it at an official source. I'm not the official source. I'm just a messenger. So I'm showing you where the official source is, okay? So, so try not to tell people that it's it's fake news when it's not. I mean, that's irresponsible. Starting September, 2024, these accounts will be retired. Retired. You will not be able to get into yours, ma'am. So we encourage you to consider setting up an account with login.gov or id.me. For more information on how to create access to your account, please visit blah, 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 blah. I have to tell you guys, I still use social security username method. Um, I will probably, I, I won't be doing the ID.me. Um, someone did communicate with me about uh, how much you're signing off on to use that. I couldn't really read, you know, take the time to get out of the weeds on it. And uh, I'd love it if someone gave me a nice little one pager that explained exactly and had citations and links, but no one really has the time to do that apparently, uh, which is fine. I don't either. But the login.gov, at least it's the government site and not a commercial provider that is obviously going to be looking for profiteering. I'm, I'm not saying they're selling your stuff without your permission, but really, are we giving them permission every time we don't read fine print? Just saying. I mean, we see it all over social media. I don't find it to be very much different. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys that. Um, so you can see for yourself that we're not just making this up. I don't, I don't push false news. It's exactly, exactly what I'm contrary to. I might say we've heard scuttlebutt this and that, um, but you're never going to hear something 
falls out of me uh, in terms of work-related stuff. You know, I could say false things otherwise, but not here. Just kidding. All right, I will talk to you later. I'm going to put it down below. Um, it's just something we all have to get a grip on. By September of 2024, guys, we're in July, August, September. You will not be able to get into your SSA.gov site. I assume you're going to forever have the opportunity to make an account for login.gov. So you could probably do that years from now if you don't want to do it now. But just saying, you're not going to be able to get your annual earnings statement. You're not going to be able to confirm that it has your earnings on it every year that you need to grow your benefit for later when you retire or you become disabled. There are certain things that are important to have there. Um, does this mean you can't trek to the social security office and wait in line and potentially get a printout of something like that? I think you could. Um, I hope they don't ever give a what get get rid of in-person visits. But again, imagine if everybody's doing that because they don't want to, you know. I don't know. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great day.